Hey YouTube people, Cameron here with the C Butters Tech Channel. And we've been looking at SFF GPUs, low profile GPUs. Uh, specifically in the last video, I compared this 4060 low profile to a workstation class card, which was a SFF 4000. And uh, I mentioned at the end of that video that I would was uh, working with a particular vendor uh, and I'm gonna name them now, it's JK and G Ventures. And they offer a mod that actually boosts the wattage on that SFF card from 70 watts to 115 watts. And what that does is give you a pretty decent boost in performance, which I've done some benchmarking and I wanna share those results with you today. They also offer a copper upgrade to the heat sink, which I'm gonna show you some performance numbers that, uh, that I tested with this. So we'll get into that as well, but there'll be a discount code uh, for their shop uh, with a with the code in the description so you can get 10% off and that'll be for the first 200 customers uh, that, that get in there through this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks. Again, these benchmarks will be the same card just before and after the mod. All right, so first up we have Time Spy. And you can see the 70 watt card went from 9996 up to 14114. So pretty decent boost in performance there. Uh, we look at Final Fantasy 15 stock went from 13858 and then with the mod went up to 17983. Time Spike Scream went from 4812 to 6574. And then superposition uh, had an uplift as well. We're looking about 30 to 40 percent uh, on all these benchmarks. 14404 to 19036. Looked at Port Royal 5958 to 8566 when you go from 70 to 116 watts. And if we look at that all together, the overall benchmark uh, you can see. Time Spy 41% uplift, 36% uplift on Time Spy, Spy Extreme. Final Fantasy 15, about a 30% uplift there, 32% in Superposition, and 43% in Port Royal. So you can see that this does give you quite a good uplift in your performance. And it does it all while, you know, it doesn't require an additional, uh, I mean, this card is requiring an eight pin. This thing is doing it all off of the PCIe bus. So that's actually pretty cool. This is, does not require any additional power. It gets it all from the motherboard and it's putting up pretty ridiculous numbers uh, for a card like that. So let's look and see where that slots in. This is a time spy benchmark. And uh, just like we saw our time spy was 14114. Uh, and that slots it right in around a 3070 Ti for this little card. Uh, bumping it up from you know where it was around here. So we went from like a 6600 XT class card or a 1080 Ti class card and bumped it all the way up to a 3070-ish class card. So that's actually really cool. So those are the gaming benchmarks, but like last time I looked at SFF cards, I wanted to also talk about the compute because uh, there are actually some pretty drastic uh, improvements in compute on this little card from bumping the watts up like this. It was actually a little bit surprising how much more performance I got. And I think that's, I think stock, the clock speeds stay fairly low, but you kind of let it spread its wings a little bit um, with that extra wattage. And it can do a lot with that in terms of compute. So in stable diffusion, the stock 70 watt RTX 4000 did about 2.71 seconds per image, but the 115 watt uplift was actually doing 1.43 images per second, which is actually pretty cool. And if we look into our compute, uh, let's look into a large language model, uh, 7B language model uh, stock. This card was doing 19.34 seconds, but after this mod, 39.82. And like I said, this is like, almost 100% uplift or around 100% uplift that we are seeing by adding this extra watt. So I don't know how the scaling necessary works on the tokens per second, um, but pretty neat stuff. 
Uh, moving to a 13B model, it went from 12.6 tokens a second to 24.29 tokens a second. So also again, nice uplifts here. I wanna talk about this copper heat sink. It's a little bit more elongated. Here is the stock heat sink. So if you look at the two next to each other, you can see that not only is this copper heat sink quite a bit larger, but if you feel the mass, this is like super heavy, it's copper, right? So definitely an upgrade in cooling. Let's see what the numbers look like when I benchmark this. And how I benchmarked it was put it under full stress, full load under fur mark. And then I ran at full bore for five minutes. So you can see when we start, this red line is the aluminum heat sink and the green line is the copper heat sink. And you can see not only does, obviously there's more mass, so it heats up slower. It's able to absorb more heat but also it, uh, it tends to peak on its loads at a, lower, uh, at a lower temperature than what we saw with the aluminum heat sink. And, and keep in mind, these, these are getting quite hot, um, but this is the 115. This, this card's meant for 70 watts. It goes all the way up to uh, 115, 116-ish watts. So the aluminum definitely is getting to the edge of of comfortable levels for a GPU. It's peaking at about, you know, 91. It's, it's about there, but it does it very quickly. It goes up there and then starts throttling basically to keep its temperatures down. But you can see the green line, which is the copper heat sink, is able to not only absorb more heat, uh, it's able to keep the temperatures overall quite a bit lower. And then you can see as it, it actually cools off slower because it has more mass. So that's why you see the red line come down quicker and rise quicker. So aluminum versus the copper, which is the green one. So it definitely can make a big difference. You can get the mod and not get the copper heat sink, obviously. But if you're looking for that extra little bit of cooling, I think it's a cool option. Uh, it makes the card nice and hefty, so it's kind of kind of neat. Okay, so uh, I'm super pleased with uh, the mod that I got from JKG Ventures and uh, I would do it again because this lets you get the most power dense GPU this fits in pretty much any SF. I mean, it's, it's super small. It's even smaller than this tiny 4060. It doesn't need additional power pins going into it, makes, which makes it very versatile, very powerful. Uh, it's the most powerful dense card you could possibly get for your SFF PC. And you saw the benchmarks, it's it's actually really cool. So again, uh, links in the description if you want to uh, order one of those mods and uh, turnaround time is really good with them. I had obviously, you know, uh, I, I paid for my mod with them and uh, had a great experience. They had it turned around really quickly, sent it back to me. Uh, my card uh, was came back safe and sound. Hope you enjoyed this video, but we're gonna go into the installation process for that copper heatsink mod. If you're not interested in that, go ahead and, and kick on out of here. Otherwise, I'll show you exactly how to take apart and install uh, the copper heatsink mod. So let's take a look. Okay, so once you have removed all the screws from the back of, of this card, you can take it uh, and flip it up like this. You wanna be careful of the cables in here, so you don't wanna mess those up, but you can just set it like this. Uh, and then we can work on getting the stock heat sink off and getting the copper heat sink in place. And you can see what a big difference that is. The next thing you'll do is uh, take the card and then the back plate will come off like this. You'll wanna watch your uh, thermal pads on the memory there, but uh, that gets you at least this far. And that exposes these four screws, which we'll need to remove to take the heatsink off. So you'll be using a T6H Torx to be able to remove these and you'll want to take it off in kind of an X fashion. There's 
close our clip. And with that, we can look on the front side and the heat sink should pop off like so. Okay, so now you can see stock heat sink. And one of the frustrating things is if you look at this SFF card, you can see where they could have, if they wanted to, given us uh, a full 24 gigabytes of memory on this card. They just decided not to, which is always slightly frustrating when they do stuff like that, but it is what it is. The other thing we'll need to do is uh, this copper heat sink can also cool uh, these uh, VRMs and uh, chips, this row and this row down there. So we'll want to use a one millimeter pad on those. When you order this from JKG Ventures, uh, they will include it with the copper heat sink. I'm gonna be using my own, so yours may look slightly differently, but once they start selling this, it would, with the retail version, it will have everything you need to make this conversion. Okay, so I've got my thermal pads in place right here, one millimeter. And what we're gonna do now is use the thermal paste and get ready to install this copper block. So let's go ahead and do a pretty generous amount of thermal paste on the GPU core here and we can get ready to install this block. And that I think is the easiest way to do that. Let's have the copper block down so you can see the holes from above. Okay, so I've just barely tapped that first screw and I'm gonna do crosswise do the same thing. I don't want to like crank it down yet until I make sure all the screws kind of have it positioned. Take your time and we will tighten this down. With that back into place we can flip the top shim. Make sure your all of your memory uh, pads are going on where they need to go. We can make sure we line it up again. Just press that down so it stays and then be very careful as you tip it to this side again because we have to reattach the fan which is very easy to do. I do like the design of these at PNY NVIDIA cards. They seem to be well thought out and that fan clips back onto place and we can go about getting <laughs> the shroud over and into place once we have that aligned. Hopefully you've done what I usually do, which is make a map for your screws and you can put them back in. They look like they're all the same length, but it doesn't hurt to keep track of your things. Uh, you'll also want to make sure <clears throat> that you put your mounting bracket back on and into place before you put those screws in because otherwise you might uh, get stuck. But I think I'm gonna hold off because that's kind of loosening up. I'm gonna get a few screws in and then do those last. And last of all, we get these uh, back screws in place to put the whole thing back together. And the fun thing about this is if you look through the interior, you can see that copper poking out, which looks kind of cool. Okay, now one thing I will I will say about, about the card now with the copper heat sink in it is it is now very hefty. Uh, it, at the very least, this is going to sink a lot of heat into it, uh, but also I think because of the extra surface area, we can see we had the copper is much longer, and with the fan, it's just gonna blow uh, more heat and pass more heat into the air that's gonna blow out of the case than the aluminum stock fan did, which should give us dramatically better temperatures, but we're gonna test that. 